uh, Luke 22. And I want you to go to the part before 44, I believe it is, when it says, pray that you enter not into temptation. I'm going to start at Luke 39. That part is at 40, but 39, okay. it starts, the, starts that, that section. So it says, it's the Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane. And he came out and went, as was his habit, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. Sporty. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, pray continually that mm -hmm. you may not fall into temptation. Mm, hold it right there. We know what we talked about on Sunday, the whole setting, um, what, what the background was. I was speaking about praying until you hit agony. Praying until you hit agony. Another part of that praying until we hit agony is what the Lord was revealing to me is that Pray until you hit also revelation. Pray until you hit revelation. That's a part of why the Lord involved into the situation. Because oftentimes uh, we could think just because we're believers that God would just do something just because I'm a believer. Um, and... He can, but really, he likes to be invoked. He likes to be invoked. He likes to be requested to come. He likes to be sought. He likes to be chased after. And it's important to understand that characteristic about God. And that's how he um, comes in and moves in a lot of ways a lot of situations you know i said it before if if you don't pray then uh or i said it this way without god we we can do nothing but without man praying god won't do anything and that's associated with he likes to be invoked he wants to be invited to come in he wants to be told about it, though he already knows, but he wants you to talk. Okay. Here we are. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you right now. Okay. Ask for your blessings in Jesus' name. All right. So we're going back to that Luke 22. Thank you so much for reading that, Sister Leah. In mm -hmm. verse 39, when Jesus yeah. was saying, pray that you enter not into temptation. I was talking about that on Sunday. I was talking about that on Sunday where, um, you know, you hear that scripture used a lot and we can use it in a lot of places. We could use a principle from it. We could use a precept from it. You could pray that you enter not into temptation regarding a lot of things. But what mm -hmm. Jesus was teaching us right there and to his disciples, he was saying, pray that you enter not into the temptation of ceasing from prayer. Ceasing from prayer. That's what he was saying. Pray that you enter not into being easily from entering into prayer. He was saying, don't, don't let things stop you so easily from entering into prayer. And that's why he used that phrase right there. Um, pray that you enter not into temptation. Mm -hmm. Then we go and we think about the apostle Paul and he said, be instant in prayer, be instant in prayer. That means to be quick to go to prayer. That means to be quick to go to prayer about everything. And I was talking about that mm -hmm. in the men's prayer recently about, okay, it's wise to go to the doctor, but pray before you go to the doctor. It's wise to take medicine if that medicine is going to help you. Mm -hmm. But pray before you take the meds. Hello? Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Right. Even if something Hello. is wise for us to do, what the Lord is still teaching us as believers is 
still pray. And we know we have a scripture that says pray about everything. And, and that's the sense that the Lord has and he wants for his believers and for his people. He wants us to pray about everything. He wants us to be uh, devoted folks, devout with a devotional life, something that people will come to you, contact you and say, hey, would you pray? If no one's asking you to pray, then they don't see you as a praying person. My God. Amen. Everybody got that? Yes, you, 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 you might see yourself as maybe being deep and this and that, and that. But if no mm. one's asking you to pray, then they don't see you as a praying person. That's true. It's very important. And so we want to fine tune our devotional life, our devotional life. And so as we see in that scripture, you can see Jesus as when he told them, pray that you enter not into temptation. Then he moved on and he began to pray and he began to pray. And then right before he went into agony and I pointed this out in the sermon that God sent an angel. God sent an angel. Now, we're going to come back to that in a little bit. Let's go to Acts chapter 10. When the apostle Paul, Sister Leah, when he was knocked yeah. off his horse. And now God was calling Paul. But I want to show you something because I want to show you how Paul's walk began. It's how it was in the middle. And even how it ended. And we're going to look and see right when God was speaking to Ananias, Sister Leah, in Acts chapter 10. He was speaking to Ananias. He said, I need you to go over here to the street called Straight. And uh, there's someone there. And I want you to go to them. When you find out, let me know. Yeah. Okay, I'll let you. Acts chapter 10. And it's uh, Paul's conversion. I'm sorry, it could be in nine. Yes, it's in nine. Paul's conversion. Matter of fact. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. After he was knocked off the horse. Now I want to go to when God began to speak to Ananias. Let's look at verse okay. 10. You got it? Yes. You want to start with um, on Damascus? When he was in Damascus? Or after he got, okay, I see where he got off, uh, he got knocked off the horse. Now, in Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. Uh huh. The Lord, uh, not, verse um, 10. Sorry. Acts 9, verse, verse 10. Yes, verse 10. You could put your phones on mute, though, please. I want the sister Aaliyah's phone not on mute. Thank you. Okay, Acts 9, verse 10. Now in Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. And he answered, here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, get up and go to the street called straight and asked at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying there. Mm. And, in a, and in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come in and place his hands on him so that he may regain his sight. My God. Remember I was saying pray not only do you hit agony, but pray yes. until you hit revelation. Yes. Do you see that revelation that he yes. got? Yes. He got so specific that he was praying. Now, you got to see he was in there praying for three days. He didn't just start praying for five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, eight hours. Yes. No, he had been in there praying for three days because he had lost his sight. Paul had all these things going. He was he had a lot of pride. He had a lot of education. And all of a sudden, now you've been knocked off of your high horse. 
<laughs> or small. Now <laughs> you blind. You can't see all that education. Can't do anything. You can't even walk down the street right now. I need you to humble yourself. And uh, uh, remember, even in the scripture, in all the scriptures, God always asked us to humble ourselves. He, we're always at, but Paul wouldn't humble himself. And so the Lord said, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it. Knocked him off his horse. He blinded him. And then Paul started praying. And he began to pray. He was praying for three days, but he prayed. I, I assure you, he was praying earnestly. I assure you, he was flipping out. He was paranoid. How did I just lose my sight? I just saw something, an angel or something, something knocked me off the horse. And remember, he said, who are you? In Hebrew, he said, Hebrew, he said, I am Jesus, whom you persecute. Yeah. But yeah. he prayed until he hit a revelation. Yeah. And the revelation was someone is coming, not just a someone. The person's name is Ananias that's coming. Yeah. If you notice how it's, he said, he said, God told him, and he told him everything. The person is coming and not only are they coming, how many times have God told you somebody or something was coming and then he even gave you the name of the person? That yeah. was a nation. Because he was praying, he was pressing, he was probably in agony and he was like, I can't let up. He was wrestling with the Lord. He was like, I'm going to pray and he prayed till he hit something. What did he hit? He hit revelation. And church, what I'm saying to you now, here, from us, in this ministry, we're going to be hitting some stuff. We're hitting it now. And remember, everything you get, you always got to bounce it off scripture. Got to bounce it off scripture. You, know, you don't want to come out with some weird revelations, some weird doctrines, some weird stuff. and all. You got to bounce it off scripture. Show me in the scripture. Show me in the scripture. You know, a lot of times when people say, this, or they'll, they'll come with all this stuff and play. Show me in the scripture where it say that. Uh, I was talking to a man today. He started trying to say, yeah, I got a this good relationship with God, but I got a problem with the church. I said, well, if you got a problem with the church, the church is Jesus' wife. And if you got a problem with my wife, you have a problem with me. Hello? And so, you don't want to just grab any old kind of revelation. I need a revelation I can see Jesus is standing behind I want a revelation that I can see points to him because the Bible tells us that the, the testimony or uh, revelation is the testimony of Jesus. Yeah. So if I'm getting a revelation, it should somehow in there connect or point me back to Jesus or something Jesus said or a principle or a precept that he was teaching. Hallelujah. Amen. So we know Paul hit something. And we, it's, that's where the Lord has taken us, church. None of us know it all in prayer. No, I wouldn't care if you've been in the greatest prayer meetings in the world. That's nothing compared to what God's going to do. That's why God didn't ever let the children of Israel know where Moses' body was buried at. Because they would never want to leave. Okay, we may have had some great things happen. We had some great things happen in Africa. Great things happen over here in Oakland. Great things in prayer meetings and all that. Now, we just, we forget that stuff. We forget it because there's so much more to come. There's so much more that God wants to do as we continue to press in and enter in and go back into prayer until we hit something. Be it agony, be it revelation, be it an angel, be it something until we get out of our natural selves and hit something. Amen. I like what he said to him in verse 15. Look at verse 13. Then Ananias answered the Lord. I have heard from many about this man, how much he has harmed and done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on the name of the Lord. But the Lord said to him, go Ananias, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things 
he must suffer for my name's sake. Now, this is important. Paul was in the jail, him and Anna, he and Barnabas, and they were in there praying, right? But remember, before they put Paul in jail, they had beat him, him and Barnabas. Barnabas. They had beat them. I mean, they were bleeding. They were beat. They were beat bloody. And they put them in jail. And then all of a sudden, while they were in there at midnight, Paul and Barnabas began to pray. They were like, look, I know I'm suffering. I'm going through something. But what's the best thing to do at that time? Start praying. Because they began to pray in the middle of the suffering and something happened. The earth began to shake. You know the story. The jail bars broke open. Folks were set free and, and captives were set free. And you remember the jailer in there? The jailer got ready to kill himself because he thought everyone ran off. And then what did they say? He said, do not harm yourself. We are all still here. Can I show you something else that prayer will do? Prayer will even open a door that you ain't supposed to go through, but the door was someone else to come through. Because Paul said, we ain't, we haven't left. And the jailer was like, what? Yeah, but he said, no, because their suffering was there to open a door for someone else while they were praying. And then it set the jailer free. And as you know, they went to the jailer's house and the whole house got set. Did you see that? The doors and the bars got open. Paul was praying. But Paul wasn't praying to get out of jail. Did anybody get that revelation? Paul wasn't even praying to get out of jail. <laughs> because he didn't run out when the bars opened. He didn't run out. He prayed to get that soul. My God. He prayed to reach that jailer. He prayed while he was suffering, not for the suffering to get off of him, but for the door to open. Not for the door to open for him to leave because he didn't leave out but for him to be able to allow the jailer to go free. Oh, my goodness. Won't you just praise the Lord with me right now for a minute? I'm telling you, because you don't even know. You may have been praying for the door to open. Man, when the door opened, it don't mean you're supposed to just run straight out. doesn't mean you're supposed to just get out the situation. Because to somebody, your suffering can be turning to something sweet for somebody else. Because that jailer watched Paul and them bleeding. They watched Paul and them get beat so many times. And then they got thrown in there. The jailer got to see everything. And he saw at midnight, they started praising the Lord. Because, you know, prayer and praise go together. Oftentimes, praise is just prayer put to song and or music. Remember, song is different from music. You could have a song with no music. And there they were. They were praying in there. And then... The earth shook. The bars opened. And what happened? Paul didn't leave. You would think you and I would run out of that door. Be honest. How many folks probably would have thought about running out that door as soon as the bars was open? As soon as the earthquake would have hit, we would have been like, wait a minute. They didn't beat me. I am bloody. Uh, they probably going to beat me again. I got to get out of this town as fast as I can. But that wasn't what the Lord was showing Paul. That wasn't the revelation. The revelation was Paul. No, don't go. Stay. Because your staying, not your escaping, is what's going to minister to the jailer. And he wound up in the jailer's house later on. Baptizing them all. Blessing them all. Winning them all to the Lord. My God, won't you just... Get a Lord, get a Lord, a hallelujah or something. I'm trying to tell you because the Lord is revealing a revelation right there. He's yeah. giving you something right there. It ain't yeah. always for us to escape. Sometimes it's my suffering is going to actually be sweet to somebody else. Yeah. 
Yes, yes, yes. Jesus. My God. All right. Let's go to the Apostle Paul again when he was on the island of the shipwreck. Uh, he was there in the shipwreck and he was being taken somewhere. I, I want you to see something else there with Paul. I believe it's in Acts. Hallelujah. Could I interject for a moment, Pastor? I had my hand up, but I just wanted to just say. Oh, um, I'm sorry. I did. I just, I <laughs> that's okay. I just wanted to let everyone know that Praise Acts, the Lord. Acts 16, uh, 16 and 40, where Paul and Silas was in the prison. So I just wanted Go to give that uh, scripture Go ahead and read it for us. Let's do it. Oh, okay. And then, oh, okay. Come on. It says, the crowd also joined in the attack against them, and the chief magistrates tore their robes off them and ordered that Paul and Silas be beaten with rods. After striking them many times, they threw them in the prison, commanding the jailer to guard them securely. He, having received such a strict command, threw them into the inner prison dungeon and fastened their feet in the stocks in an agonizing position. But about midnight, yes. Yes. I don't know are they bleeding because they got beat many times with rod with no clothes on. Yes. And I don't know if you know, but you bleed when they beat you like that with rods. Let's go. But about midnight, when Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praises to God and the prisoners were listening to them, suddenly there was a great earthquake so powerful that the very foundations of the prison were shaken. And at once, all the doors were open and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer, shaken out of sleep, saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, thinking that the prisoners had escaped. But Mm. Paul shouted, saying, do not hurt yourself. We are all here. Then the jailer called for torches and rushed in. And trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. And after he brought them out of the inner prison, he said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? My God. You see that? Thank you. God is powerful. They were taken into the inner part of the prison. That means deep in the dungeon, not in the regular part. They, They were taken way deep back down there where they forget about you. Have you ever been thrown so far back into some stuff? They didn't just forgot all about you. Jesus. They put you way back there. They, they, you know they done forgot about you. They done wrote you off. But Paul and them say, I know what to do in here. A midst of this pain, being beat and bloody and all that, because that they Jesus. were. Not only that, it said that he put the, the, the handcuffs on their feet in a yeah. very awkward position. That means they wasn't comfortable walking around in there praying. No, it said they were in a very bad position while they were bloody, beat, and handcuffed. Yes. And Paul and Barnabas said, well, praise the Lord then. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. I don't know what they were singing back there, but the Bible tells me they started singing and praising the Lord. And prayer, they they went into that. They prayed and they prayed until they hit something. Yes. And whatever they hit was pretty hard. Yes. Because everything shook. The earthquake. So we know, we know, Mm. church, we, it it don't matter if they don't preach this, teach it anywhere else. We see from scripture that we can pray till we hit something. Yeah. We can pray. You may hit a number of things. You may be bouncing off of different things in the spirit like you a ping pong ball. But that's all right. Don't don't stop. Just stay in there. Keep getting. Just stay in there until you hit that thing. I want you to go when Paul then was on the boat and they were about to crash. That's where I want you to go, Sister Leah. And that's a shipwreck? Is that the that's shipwreck? It. Okay, that's it. In Malta. So that is uh, in Acts. It's also Acts uh, 27. Uh, that's it. 27, means we can start at verse 14. Please. But soon afterward, a violent wind called... Eurocladon. Eurocladon. How do you say that? It's Eurocladon. called Eurocladon. 
In other words, it's a typhoon. It's a bad, uh, <laughs> it's a bad windstorm, okay? Right. It came rushing down from the island. And when the ship was caught in it and could not head against the wind to gain stability, we gave up and letting her drift were driven along. We ran under the shelter of a small island, 25 miles south of Crete, called Clotta. And with great difficulty, we were able to get the ship's skiff on the deck and secure it. Uh -huh. After hoisting the skiff on board, they used support lines for frapping to undergird and brace the ship's hull and fearing that they might run aground on the shallows of Sardis, which is off the north coast of Africa, they let down the sea anchor and lowered the sails and were driven along backwards with the bow into the wind. On the next day, as we were being violently tossed about by the storm and taking on water, they began to jets on the cargo. And on the third day, they threw the ship's tackle, spare lines, blocks, and miscellaneous equipment overboard with their own hands to further reduce the weight. Since neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and no small storm kept raging about us, from then on, all hope of our being saved was growing worse and worse and gradually abandoned. After they had gone a long time without food because of seasickness and stress, Paul stood up before them and said, men, you should have followed my advice and should not have set sail from Crete and oh. made on this dip. Uh -huh. It's important. It's important. To heed counsel from praying people. It's important. It's a good practice to heed counsel, not just get it. Some people will get counsel, but they won't heed it. That means they won't take it and put it into play. But if you know this is a praying individual, this is this is a praying person, it, 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 it could be a very good idea. Of course, you have to pray also, but it could be very good to listen to a praying person. Let's go. Okay, it says, uh, man, you should have followed my advice and should not have set sail from Crete and brought on this damage and loss. But even now, I urge you to keep up your courage and be in good spirits because there will be no loss of life among you, but only loss of the ship. For this very night, an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood before me Stop. and said, keep going. Stop being afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar and behold, God has given you the lives of all those who are sailing with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I believe God and have complete confidence in him that it will turn out exactly as I've been told. But we My must run God. the ship aground on some island. Hope. Okay. Hope. Did you hear that? Oh. The man was praying. I assure you, during that storm, you haven't seen stars for days. You haven't seen light for days. You haven't seen the moon for days. I assure you, not just they were praying, but Paul was praying too. And But Paul prayed till he saw something. He prayed till he hit something and an yes. angel came. Yes. And yes. strengthened him. Just like it did with Jesus praying in the garden, is that an yeah. angel came and strengthened him before he hit agony. Thank you. And that's what I was saying, church. I believe we have been in the presence of angels. Yeah. We will be in the presence of more yeah. of them. They will be around us. They will be going. Yeah. And, the, and it, the angel gave him a complete revelation. He said, you're not going to die. Yeah. None of y'all are going to die. God has given you these souls in your hand. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You see that? Thank you. Let's, let's go a little further. I'm at verse 27. The 14th night had come and we were drifting and being driven about in the Adriatic Sea 
when about midnight, the sailors began to suspect that they were approaching some land. So they took soundings using a weighted line and found the depth to be 20 fathoms, that's 120 feet. And a little further on, they sounded again and found the depth to be 90 feet. Then fearing that we might run aground somewhere on the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern to slow the ship and kept wishing for daybreak to come. But as the sailors were trying to escape secretly from the ship and had let down the skiff into the sea, pretending they were going to lay out anchors from the bow, Paul Uh said... What did he say? Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, unless these men remain on the ship, you cannot be saved. Hold it. Then... Hold it. You see, they were planning their own stuff behind their back. Yes. Planning their own stuff behind Paul's back. They were pretending to do this. Pretending to, they're like, we're we not listening to Paul. We can ready to jump out. And we're going to try and make it on ourselves. And Paul had to tell them, that's not what was revealed to me by God. What was revealed to him was that uh, you stay in this ship. You won't make it to the other side. This is what he was telling. Let's go. Then the soldiers cut away the ropes that held the skiff and let it fall and drift away. While they waited for the day to dawn, Paul encouraged them all and told them to have some food, saying, this is the 14th day that you have been constantly on watch and going without food, having eaten nothing. So I urge you to eat some food, for this is for your survival. For not a hair from the head of any of you will perish. Having said this, he took bread and gave thanks to God in front of them all, and he broke it and began to eat. Then all of them were encouraged, and their spirits improved, Hello? And they also ate some food. My God. They were encouraged. The spirit was encouraged. They knew they were in the will of God right now. We're in the plan of God right now. Don't move. I'm glad we didn't jump out of the ship. Well, you ought to tell somebody, I'm glad I didn't get out the ship. I'm so glad I didn't get out the ship. I'm glad I didn't get out the ship. Because <laughs> I this am glad ship, I didn't get out the ship. is going somewhere. Hallelujah. Jesus. This ship is, is going somewhere. My God. My Lord, let's go. Jesus. Then all of them were encouraged and their spirits improved and they ate some food. All told, there were 276 of us aboard the ship. Oh my God. And God told Paul, not one of them were gonna, was going to die in that terrible storm. My God. 270 some people. Let's go. After they had eaten enough, they began to lighten the ship by throwing the wheat from Egypt overboard into the sea. When day came, they did not recognize the land, but they noticed a bay with a beach, and they decided to run the ship ashore there if they could. So they cut the cables and severed the anchors and left them in the sea, while at the same time unlashing the ropes of the rudders, and after hoisting the foresail to the wind, they headed steadily for the beach. But striking a reef with waves breaking in on either side, they ran the ship aground. The, the prow forward point stuck fast and remained immovable while the stern began to break up under the violent force of the waves. The soldiers' plan was to kill the prisoners so that none of them would dive overboard and swim to land and escape. You but see? the centurion... Sorry. Again, none of them wanted to listen to what Paul had got. Paul said nobody was going to be lost. No life was going to be lost. Again, they keep trying to come up with their own plan. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's, do uh, let's, let's make Paul think we're doing this, and then we're going that way. Jesus. Going. But the centurion wanted to save Paul. Kept 
But the centurion, wanting to save Paul, kept them from carrying out their plan. He commanded those who could swim to jump overboard first and get to shore. And he commanded the rest to follow, some on floating planks and others on various things from the ship. And so it was that all of them were brought safely to land. Just like that. The angel. Yes. Let's go. Yes. Uh, that's the end of that. It's going safe at Malta. You want me to continue from there? Yes. Safe at Malta? Yes. After we were safe. After we were safe. On land, we found out that the island was called Malta. And the natives showed us extraordinary kindness and hospitality. For they kindled a fire and welcomed us all since it had begun to rain and was cold. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper called out because of the heat and fastened itself on his hand. When the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they began saying to one another, undoubtedly, this man is a murderer. And though he has been saved from the sea, justice, the avenging goddess, has not permitted him to live. Then Paul simply, Paul simply shook the creature off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. Can I tell you something? When you stand in prayer, there's a lot of stuff you ain't even going to have to be wrestling with. Oh, you no, 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 no. Prayer, yeah. you ain't going to have to wrestle and battle with these spirits, those spirits, okay. that spirit. All, all you got to do is just stay in prayer. And the Lord then gave you something and told you something. Don't waste your time battling with them, trying to see what kind of snake it was and all that. Well, is they Paul just, just simply shook that devil off and was like, no, I'm, I'm sticking with what God told me. He said, I'm going to go stand before Caesar. And just because something new happened, that doesn't mean anything. I'm, I'm sticking with what the Lord showed me from the yes. beginning. Amen. Yeah. It's been given power to tread over serpents. Amen. Ain't uh -huh. different from this one just because it jumped out the fire. I'm not going to be tempted to get off uh -huh. yes. what the Lord showed me and what he's been talking about. Amen. Thank you. And Jesus. so something else happened. Let's go. But they stood watching and expecting him to swell up or suddenly drop dead. Uh, who? Oh. Now, you know, it's some folks around us watching. They, they thought we was yeah. going to be put out, kicked out, bought out, sold out. <laughs> I remember when we first came to Oakland, it wasn't one soul in the church but the roaches. But I preached like it was full. <laughs> I was preaching. Hey, man. To the ants. I was preaching to the poop on the windows. Yeah. That's my fight. It, it ain't no different from how it go today. It didn't matter. I don't, I don't know. I still see what God just said. I still yeah. see what he showed yeah. me. I still yeah. see what he revealed to me in prayer. And I'm, I'm going to keep on. Yeah. Ain't nothing yet. I ain't seen anything yet because I ain't, I'm still nowhere where I, where I want to be. And, and I said in Stockton recently preaching, and I mean this with everything oh, in me, I, the more I pray, the less I want to preach. Yeah. The more I pray, I didn't yeah. get that from anybody. I didn't get that from a teacher. God Jesus. showed me. The yes. more I pray, yes. I want to preach. Thank you. Thank I hit you. something. I discovered you. something right there. Yeah. I don't know what more. I know it's for me. Because I'm going to be Jesus. happy when I ain't got to do it no more. <laughs> I'm going hey, to be right up hey, in the I'm going to be right Jesus. up in where the Lord want me to be. I'm going to be yeah. in there praying. I'm yeah. going to be seeking the Lord. Uh, I, I'll be happy being a doorkeeper. I'll Jesus. greet everybody. And then I'm going to walk around and pray for the devils that follow them in. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hallelujah. My God. My God. What? Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. He was like that. And the man, he know more Bible than the law allow. He ain't a preacher. He ain't, he not a, a greeter and none of that. He just walk around the church like this. He doing his hands slow. You come through the door, you'll see him over there 
And and I I used to ask him because they all thought he was weird. But ask my wife. I'm the only one he wind up liking. Because <laughs> for some reason, he, you know, because I was like, hey, what's when you do this, what is that? Because I went and asked him. I said, why do you walk around the church doing this? And he'd be like, it ain't very obvious what he's doing, you know, so he ain't trying to, you know, uh, dance so people could see him and stuff. No, he was just. And then, and I said, I said, I said, can you tell me what's that? He said, uh, well, every now and then, God give me a sword that's on fire. And uh, he said, he showed me that spirits be following folks in. Yeah. And, he, and he told me just to yeah. check them spirits when they fight people in. And I, you know what? I just believe the man. To this day, I, 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 I I still believe the man. It, it, and he's, to this day, he's a mentor to me. And we call and we talk and I talk and he, but I still believe that he see that stuff. And he just chopped them spirits. Amen. And after I learned when they, Jesus' disciples said, teach us to pray. They didn't say, teach me to preach. They didn't say, teach me to prophesy. They didn't say, teach me to, uh, to anything. And anything that we all do in this thing, they didn't yeah. say. Remember, they only said, teach me to pray because they knew that where it was at. Mm-hmm. They knew that's where it was at. It'll mm-hmm. deal with anything in you first. <laughs> and it'll deal with stuff in other things and other folks and in other atmospheres and situations. Wow. It was in that prayer. All right, let's finish a little bit uh, right here with Paul. There's one more thing I want to point out with Paul. Okay, um, let's see. Okay, but they stood watching and expecting him to swell up or suddenly drop dead. But after they had waited a long time and seen nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and began saying that he was a god. Uh-oh, you see that? You see that? How the very people that thought something crazy was going to wind up happening to you. They thought you wasn't going to make it this far. And then when they saw that you was able to weather the storm, and now they're going to call you and start texting you and say, I knew you was going to make it. Yeah. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. yes. You done had them. They done yes. contacted you, and you knew that they were already, but then later on they contact you and say, I knew you was close to God. Uh, I always knew you was close to God. Mm-hmm. Really? You already yeah. started planning my funeral in the spirit. Right. Let's go. Let's keep going. In the vicinity of that place, there were estates belonging to the leading man of the island named Publius. Okay. Who welcomed and entertained us hospitably for three days. And it Mm. happened that the father of Publius was sick in bed Mm. with recurring attacks of fever and the the centira. And Mm -hmm. Paul went to him, and after he had prayed, he laid his hands on him and healed him. There he goes, still praying. Still praying after the snake and body bit him, after the people that gave up on him, switched sides on him right in his face, told him he was bad, he was a prisoner, then came back and said, no, no, we with you, Paul. Paul's still praying for the sick. Still praying. He's still laying hands on folks when he see it. He's still doing the will of God. He's still ready to complete his mission, not compete with anyone. Let's go. After this occurred, the rest of the people on the island who had diseases were coming to him and being healed. They also gave us many honors, gifts, courtesies, expressing respect. And when we were setting sail, Okay. They supplied us with all the things we needed. Uh, you remember what I was saying? If you would pray, the money will come. If yeah. you would pray, everything else you need will come. Oh, we don't okay. have to fundraise. Jesus. Jesus. It said they were supplied with everything that they needed. Yeah. Everything that was necessary. I, I told that pastor in 
uh, Guatemala before I left. When he was in, we're looking for a building. We look. I said, look, just come here and find some people that's going to come with you and pray on a regular basis. Pastor Yarman, uh, House of Elijah is his ministry. And recently he had a heart attack. So we want to pray for Pastor Yarman. He's a young, skinny man. You know, you, when they hear people having heart attacks, you, you know, you think they got a lot of other things going on. But, you know, I don't know. But I know this. I told a man, if you will pray, they will come bring you a building. I said, if you will pray, they will find the building for you and ask you, do you want this one? This is what I believe. I believe that if we pray and we keep praying, church, we will hit something. Yes. Yes. It says, verse 10. It says, they also honored us in many ways. And when we departed, they provided such things as were necessary. They didn't ask for anything. Hello? The visions came. They didn't ask for anything. Yeah. All they did was pray, follow Paul, stuck with the praying folks. Stuck with the praying man, and everything that was necessary came. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. We love you. We honor you. Lord, we thank you without you, God. Thank you, Lord. No, Lord God, if we don't pray, you won't do it. Because you need to be invoked. You after huh? You need to be Curried, yes, you want to come after you. You want us to invite you yes, into the situation. And Lord, we do right now. Thank we're going to pray until we hit something. We're going to pray yes. until an angel to strengthen. Oh, Lord, we're going to maintain this life of prayer. Yes, we're going to maintain yes, the yes, life God. of prayer. We're going to maintain the life of prayer. Lord, we're going to pray. Forget the service, but we are going to pray. Thank you, Lord, God. Thank pray. You, Lord Jesus. And pray without wrath and without doubting. And God, that's what we are going to do. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's what we're going to do. Can I tell you something, church? When the scripture says pray without wrath, and without doubting, but to pray without wrath. That literally means to pray without your natural flowing juices. Let's say, Jesus. let's take, take a plant. A plant has juices and nutrients and things that's oh. coming to it to make it naturally turn green. Well, that just keeps it functioning in a natural way. So when he says yeah, pray yeah, yeah. without wrath, that means to pray without natural stuff getting in the way. So that means you got to pray past yeah. my natural prayer. Because yeah. that's what it means. Pray without it even means pray past passion. Uh, yeah, we, yeah. He wants to pray past passion. He wants us to pray till we don't even recognize ourselves anymore. Like when yes. they found Anna at the altar. Jesus. They, oh, she was drunk. Oh, she yes. wasn't drunk. No, she was just praying without wrath. Jesus. She was praying without doubt. You remember what doubt means? Aporio in the Greek. Yeah. It means you have all the weapons to get away, but you won't use none of them. My God. And only you can put doubt on you. The government can't put doubt on you. Satan can't put doubt on you. Your ex-husband can't put doubt on you. The person that you thought was about to happen is but can't put doubt on you. Can't, no one can put doubt on you. It's it's impossible by the very oh, word. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oreo. It means apply doubt. It means apply pressure to keep you stuck like the Oreo cookie. So when he says pray without wrath, he says pray without your regular little talking passions. This is why cute prayers won't do. Jesus. 
Perfect, Perfect uh, little doctrinal uh, prayers. God, I'm so glad, God, I'm a Pentecostal. I'm so glad, God, that I'm this. I'm so glad, God, that I'm that I'm in the truth. And yeah. I don't think much coming from that. Jesus. Jesus. Amen. This is what Thank I'm telling you. you in the go. No, this is Thank what you, he's teaching. Because that ain't bringing Thank agony. That ain't, that ain't agony. That's not bringing... He's saying pray until you don't even recognize yourself. Yes. Yes. Pray yes. without wrath. We recognize ourselves when we're in wrath, right? Yeah, right. because we're like, I'm... I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I'm this. But he's right. like, pray without that. Jesus. Do you know one of the, and this is, I'm going to leave on this. One of the key purposes of, of meekness and, and humility is why he talks about it a lot. He wants us to have it and all that. It, it, it wasn't so we don't explode on people and so we don't respond back. The truth is he gave us that as a fruit of the spirit so we will, can easily retreat to prayer. Let's go home. Right. Father, I, I pray blessing. Oh, God, thank you. Help us, Lord. Lord, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand. We resist the devil. And he's going right. to get and while we're resisting them, we're going to stay in prayer. We're going to stay in humility. We're going to stay watching. You said, Nehemiah, set a watch. He said, we prayed unto our God and we set a watch. God, help me to watch and to pray. Help me to pray. Watch. Help me to set that watch because I know what I need to watch out for. Watch in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.